Hi guys, so following Priti Patel's frankly disgraceful policy where people arriving in the UK seeking refuge will be now transferred to Rwanda for processing, also called offshoring, the Tories have been struggling to defend it. Now how these things work is so, a new policy is formed, Tory Party HQ will send out a memo via email about how to respond to questions from the media or the public on these new policies. The problem with this approach is that if the policy breaches logic or international agreements, it makes the MP or minister answering the questions, well, sound a bit stupid. Here we have Andrew Griffin, a Tory, sounding a bit stupid. You're an individual who, perhaps for various reasons, wants to claim asylum in the UK. How do you do it legally? Well, there are many, I mean, all of the all of the migrants that we're talking about in the channel today. OK, I need to interrupt for a second. Um, she's not talking about migrants. She's talking about asylum seekers. And these are two completely different things. She made a very simple question here. She asked a very simple question. How do you claim asylum in the UK legally? And he's talking about migrants. OK, completely different things. Uh, and that is the acute problem that's been going on for many years that this government's trying to grasp the nettle and, and tackle um, and to protect life. Um, all of those people are embarking from other safe countries. Now he's talking about asylum because immigrants have nothing to do with asylum. Immigrants are coming to the country to work. Asylum seekers are coming to the country to seek refuge. Okay to claim asylum. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to mix two things here. He's trying to mix immigrants and asylum seekers. She asked about asylum seekers. He's talking about then He answered about immigrants. Then he started talking about asylum. Uh, and in many cases, they've crossed a number of safe countries first. Okay, uh, so when they're, if, if they're in fear of their lives It's a different question. It was a different question. There, then, there, there then, is then one, of the, one of the avenues open to them is to claim asylum in the first safe country. In, so they in can't which claim they, asylum here. Uh, they there is no now, legal you, way to UK, claim asylum here. The UK, in terms of numbers, the UK is already taking significantly higher numbers uh, than many of those countries that have open, safe and legal routes. Okay, he's let the cat out of the bag here because you're not supposed to say that there are safe and legal routes in other countries you're supposed to say yes here in the uk we have safe and legal routes but then as soon as you say that then you would be asked obviously by a good journalist what are they <laughs> and this uh, journalist asked him at the very beginning how do you claim asylum in the uk legally obviously he didn't want to answer that question because he'd have to say, well, you have to, by law, at the moment, the Tories haven't been able to get rid of it yet, by law, because the UK has signed up to UN conventions, you're supposed to arrive in the country and make your claim. And your claim is, is accepted or rejected on its own merit. There's no business about safe countries or where you were or how long you stayed in another place or whatever. That's not relevant and it should not be used as part of the process to determine whether somebody can stay in the country or not. Now, obviously, he, he's trying to, and, you know, the fact that he said, uh, yeah, other countries have safe and legal routes. Well, then that begs the question, how did people from Ukraine arrive in the UK? How did people from Hong Kong arrive in the UK? How did people from Afghanistan arrive in the UK? Because these are three of the countries that Boris Johnson and Priti Patel and others hold up as examples of how people have arrived in the UK and claimed asylum or refugee status. So how is it possible for them and not for others? Now, obviously, if there were safe routes, safe legal routes for people in France at the moment, then they would use them. Nobody wants to pay thousands of euros to somebody who's going to tell you to get on a very dodgy boat that you're not sure will, whether it will c carry you across the sea or not. Because if they could go to the airport or go to uh, the, the, the Eurostar tunnel at a station or wherever, they would use those channels, but they can't because if they do, the operators get fined. That's why they require checks at the ports 
to check that you're not uh, a ref you're not trying to seek asylum in the UK. So you have to arrive in the UK by some means, and you have to make your claim. Now, some people got very upset a few weeks ago that at the suggestion that the Tory government don't care about refugees. I'm going to disagree politically and all the rest of it, but I've just had it up to here with people trying to suggest that this country is not generous. And all this stuff about hostile environment, the hostile environment was invented under a Labour Home Secretary. So can we just chuck it when it comes to the partisan nonsense and get on with delivery? I'd like to ask Michael Gove, what do you think about this new policy of sending the Royal Navy to pick up people and take them to Heathrow Airport and send them to Rwanda? Would you consider that a hostile environment? Would you consider that distasteful? Especially as you don't know whether these people are claiming asylum, you don't know if these people are um, economic immigrants you don't you you have no information about them you you pick them up and you take them to uh, Heathrow Airport and they're sent by plane to Rwanda where they will be processed where they will have their claims processed uh, and you're suggesting that you know people on the other side are the problem let me know in the comment section guys what you think about all of this as always your comments are greatly appreciated thanks a lot